There are leaves around, and I know just the tune to accompany them. Paimon feels like a whole new Paimon after those two days in the hot springs. The abyss kind of threw a wrench in our relaxation, though. Still, spending time here really has felt like a vacation. The Koholosaurs are so nice and so fun to play with. Their bellies are super bouncy. Oh, and Atea's snacks were so delicious. She gave Paimon some for the road just this morning, actually. Yeah, we had some kids who got caught throwing stones in the hot springs, so not much has changed since we first met her. Hey, you guys. Sleep well last night? Yep, this area is so nice. <laughs> Glad you like it. I was thinking of taking you guys out to do some sea fishing. Later tonight, we can eat whatever we catch. Fresh fish is absolutely delicious right off the grill. Hey, Mualani! Yeah? What do you need? The team sent out to fight in the Night Warden Wars has returned. And Kachina? Is she back as well? Kachina fell in battle. But don't worry, the team was victorious, so the Rite of Resurrection will be held in the stadium soon. That's a relief. The Abyss is cunning, and it was her first time. Mistakes are bound to happen. Exactly. She deserves to hold her head up high. Alright, thanks for letting me know. We'll head out in a bit. Jeez, she sounded a little anxious there. Had me thinking it was bad news for a moment. Mulani, you said the Abyss was cunning just now. But it seems like the Abyss just wants to destroy everything. Like, think about all those monsters that attacked your tribe. If there really was some sort of cunning plan, wouldn't it make more sense to send them to attack Kachina and her small team? Um, not that Paimon wants them to be in any more danger, it's just... <laughs> Relax, I get it. The Abyss is difficult to understand, that's for sure. At a glance, it certainly seems like the only goal is total destruction. The Abyss isn't a living entity, after all, so what capacity for logic or planning could it possibly possess? But through our long history of fighting the Abyss, we've realized things aren't quite so simple. 500 years ago, the Abyss invaded Tevat. You know about that, right? That's right. Conria suffered greatly during that time. But so did every other nation in Tevat. And Natlan was the worst affected of all. It took the combined efforts of the then Pyro Archon and heroes from every tribe to finally repel the Abyss. Even so, the effects of the invasion lingered for hundreds of years, only able to be reversed little by little. Our tribe's waters were contaminated. The children of Echo's territory was overrun by dangerous sludge surging from underground. Unrelenting black winds tore across the lands of the Flower Feather Clan. It was like each disaster was designed for a specific tribe. Exactly. We once thought that the Abyss's desire for destruction was a sort of primal instinct. But its methods are, in truth, marked by intelligence. We now believe the Abyss has invaded the Night Kingdom, and has the capacity to read the memories of this land at any given moment. And that's how it became so dangerous and cunning! Almost like it knows you inside and out! Yes, and that's why we've been unable to fully eradicate it, even after all this time. Luckily, the problems left behind by the Abyss have been successfully addressed by the various Pyro Archons we've had over the years. Now every tribe is prospering and things are looking up. I mean, just look at what we managed to do a few days ago. We totally fought them off. You must have had to sacrifice a lot to get to this point. Every battle, every sacrifice is in pursuit of a future where we get to stop fighting. Responsibility, duty, unavoidable burden. Everyone in Natlan views the war differently. But 
I believe we will be rid of the Abyss one day. And the efforts of all who fought against them will become a story for the ages. To think that my name could survive in ballads passed down to future generations, it's kind of romantic. Everyone has something that drives them forward, you know? We have to. Not only for ourselves, but for our future. Anyway, let's head to the stadium. Our fishing trip can wait until Kachina's back with us. The sea's not going anywhere. Time to go. out on the chance to welcome our heroes back from battle. <laughs> it's their moment of glory. Kachina's gonna be so flustered. She's never had this many eyes on her before. Yeah, she doesn't seem like the kind of person who likes being the center of attention. Looks like I'm just in time. Yeah, a commission ran longer than expected, but I made it. I heard about the incident with your tribe, Mualani. Is everyone all right? Yeah, it's all taken care of. Our new friend here has got some tricks up her sleeve, by the way. Hey, look! Is it about to start? That's right. Someone will come out and recite a eulogy, and then we'll sing the Ode of Resurrection together. Come on, let's find a spot with a good view. When the singing starts, just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Let's go somewhere higher up so Kachina can spot us. Warriors of Netland, heed the call of life. We are the inheritors of memory and legend. Those who grew alongside sun and wind. Those who forged our own destiny and future. That is Netland's fire, the lifeblood of our nation.
<laughs> I could not find Kachina within the Night Kingdom, or locate her ancient name. What? Uh, what does that even mean? Usually once the Ode is complete, the Pyro Archon and Resurrected Person will emerge from the flames. But something went wrong. What's going on? This has never happened before. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Clearly, the team sent to fight the Abyss didn't win after all. Think about it. The Ode rekindles all victors. We've witnessed it countless times. Since the Archon couldn't find Kachina in the Night Kingdom, that must mean there's more to this victory than meets the eye. Hey! You just haven't gotten over the fact that Kachina beat you in the pilgrimage! Pathetic. The both of you. Your wild guesses are misplaced. We completed our mission. Maybe you did. But who's to say whether that little girl even contributed at all? Maybe she got scared and ran off. Why would the Wyab recognize someone like her, even if she was on the winning team? How dare you insult a hero of Natland like that! Kachina sacrificed herself to repel the Abyss! She doesn't deserve to be subjected to your vile rumors when she's not even here to defend herself! Calm down, Mulani. There's no point arguing with the likes of them. I can't just sit here and let them slander her like that. To insult a hero of Natlan, the person actually has to be a hero. You... you... Think about it, everyone. Who do you think is really at fault here? A girl who never should have even gone to war? Or the great Pyro Archon? Why would the rules of our nation suddenly stop working? <sighs> That's true. If she wasn't revived, it must mean she failed to achieve victory. Maybe the Wyab interpret victory in different ways? I mean, that girl didn't look all that strong to me. for this moment for too long. No matter how daunting the situation, no matter how scared she might feel, she's always the first person to stand up and face it head on. We don't even know what happened. So don't you dare try to use this as an excuse to vent your anger or slander her reputation. Fine. We'll find out what happens soon enough. Then, we'll see who truly deserves glory. That's enough. There is no doubt about today's victory, or Kachina's part in it. She is a hero worthy of our admiration and celebration. However, the failure of today's ceremony is undeniable. Kachina has not been rekindled, and I offer you all my deepest apologies as I continue to investigate this matter. To prevent further casualties, I have decided to suspend the pilgrimage until this matter is resolved. What? No one is all-knowing. No one is infallible, not even myself. But doubt is a means by which we seek the truth, not a weapon we wield against others. I... 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 I, I didn't mean it that way, Archon. I just... If there are things you wish to clarify, then ask me directly. Doubt my answer if you wish, but now's your chance. You have concerns? State them. N no, uh, of, c of course not. Even though I have said nothing to change your mind, then it would seem the truth never mattered to you at all. That guy doesn't even have the courage to answer the Pyro Archon's question. So much for all that glory talk earlier. I have a question, Archon. My friend, Kachina. Do you have any idea where she is? It's extremely important to me. I know you said you were investigating the situation, but... I'm sorry, that's not enough. I've already shared everything I know. If you want to learn the truth and rescue your friend sooner, you should join the investigation. So, what do you say? Of course I'll join. In that case, come see me in the Speaker's Chamber. We should join them. Oh, and 
If it's not too much trouble, could you drop by as well, Traveler? I'd like to have a chat. Rest assured, everyone, I'll keep the Tribal Chiefs informed on the progress of the investigation. Once again, I apologize for the outcome of this ceremony. If there are no further questions, let's part for now. Um, did she just... ask us to come along? I believe she did. Let's go. I'd like to know what's going on myself. The situation is urgent, so I'll get straight to the point. Kachina is undoubtedly a hero of Natlan, and I'm deeply sorry this happened to her. There's been unrest in the Night Kingdom, but I don't know what's causing it. As a result, I've been unable to track down her location. Until we find and address the cause of the unrest, the Ode of Resurrection will continue to be ineffective. And that means Kachina won't be able to come back? That's correct. Not until the problem with the Night Kingdom is resolved. How long will that take? It's hard to say. Kachina always dreamed of fighting the Abyss. Of doing her part to defend Natlan. She wasn't afraid of death because she knew, if it came down to it, the Pyro Archon would be there to bring her back to life. Whenever we sat down together, exhausted from training, she would always hum the Ode of Resurrection. She was supposed to come back to us. We were supposed to hug her and celebrate with her and share her joy. We supported her every step of the way, but what are we supposed to do now? Sit peacefully and wait for her return? Lose ourselves in grief over her death? Tell me. Are we her friends? Or her murderers? That's not fair, Ulani. It's alright. I understand your rage and your grief. Kachina's life means a great deal to me, Muolani. Believe me, I want to bring her back as soon as possible. I would give you that peace of mind if I could. But please... Hear what I have to say so I can at least give you a broader picture of the issue we are now facing. Considering the recent attack on your tribe, I believe the Abyss has found a new means of undermining the rules of our nation. You mean... The Sacred Flame. The foundation of our resistance against the Abyss. If we continue to hold the pilgrimage and send teams to fight the Abyss, there will likely be more casualties. But if we stop altogether, the Sacred Flame will only grow weaker. The Abyss will scale up their attacks, and the tragedy we saw with the people of the Springs will only be the first of many. If we compare the two choices, the former seems to be the lesser of two evils. <sighs> Sorry, I know that may sound harsh, but I bear the name Malipo. Weighing the costs is my duty. The raw truth can be cruel. But we need to understand it if we want to approach this rationally. But what would you say, Mulani? This is personal for you. And unlike Kenich, I dare say it's not a simple case of weighing up which course of action is less painful, is it? No. I can't choose between them, and I don't want to. Saying that one is preferable over the other is disrespectful to the people who suffered. Hmm. You're saying it doesn't matter whether I suspend the pilgrimage. The consequences will be equally painful. Yes. What happened to Kachina breaks my heart. But I couldn't bring myself to sacrifice other people for her sake. And that is the crux of the problem. It's not simply a matter of choosing the lesser of two evils. Either way, there will be people who suffer. And the end result will be the same. Belief in the pilgrimage will waver. Once doubt has crept in, the people will no longer unite in battle against the Abyss. And that 
is exactly what the Abyss wants. Their ultimate goal isn't to break the rules that make the Ode of Resurrection work. It's to destroy the people's faith in them. To prevent what happened to Kachina from happening to anyone else, we need to suspend the pilgrimage. So that is my current plan. And in the meantime, I've made efforts to strengthen each tribe's defenses. Then, we have to find another way of strengthening the Sacred Flame to keep the Abyss at bay. This won't be easy. I'll need time to figure out the best approach. I understand your anger, Mualani. But I hope that provided some clarity, at least. Wow. Hyman thought things were gonna get heated for a second, but the Pyro Archon took the time to explain everything so patiently. I owe you an apology, Archon. I let myself get carried away earlier, and I'm sorry. You're right. We need to focus on finding solutions. We could always hold the pilgrimage without sending a team to fight in the Night Warden Wars. That way, we would still be able to fuel the Sacred Flame. I've considered that, but the two events have nearly always been linked. Without the chance to fight the Abyss, pilgrimage rankings lose their prestige, and competitor numbers will drop. With fewer participants, the amount of contending fire produced will decrease, and the vicious cycle will continue indefinitely. So, essentially, the Abyss has taken Kachina hostage. You've learned about the concept of ley lines during your travels, yes? The Night Kingdom is something similar. Staying there for a short period of time shouldn't have an effect on the person. But with the Abyss in the picture, it's a different story. Your sense of self will be devoured, until eventually you become one with the Sea of Souls. Imagine pouring a cup of water into a rushing river. You can try to scoop up another cup, but there's no chance it will be the same water you had before. I won't sugarcoat it. That is the danger Kachina is currently facing. Just like you said, Archon. Both of these problems need to be addressed. You can focus all your efforts on dealing with the Sacred Flame. I will go search for Kachina. The Abyss poses the same threat to you as it does to her. It is very possible you will not return. Knowing that, do you still choose to go? Kachina's waiting for us to rescue her. That's all that matters. I failed to protect her during our campaign. But I can make it up to her now. I choose to go as well. Um, Traveler? What do you think? Understood. Then I'll support you in any way I can. The Masters of the Nightwind have a technique that can extract an ancient name from the Ley Lines. If we can find Kachina's ancient name, I can use the link between them to pinpoint her position within the Night Kingdom. Then comes the hard part. You need to visit the Night Kingdom in person and rescue her. But isn't the Night Kingdom a land of souls? Can we even go there? Under normal circumstances, only the consciousness can enter. But there is a way to go there in person. However, know that the Night Kingdom will attempt to repel you, and the Abyss certainly won't leave you be. That's fine by me. Same here. Fighting the Abyss is nothing new for me. So, uh... Paimon's the only one who's scared? Well... If you're going, Traveler... Paimon's going, too. Seat Lolly of the Masters of the Nightwind once created an artifact that can be used to communicate with the Wyab. We call it the Spirit Speaker Stone. It was originally used as a ceremonial artifact wielded by the tribal chiefs, but that spiritual quality also means it can be used to search for an ancient name. That was the artifact I delivered to the Scions of the Canopy a few days ago. Didn't think I'd be hearing about it again so soon. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. Your thanks are unnecessary. 
I will offer you whatever aid I can, but your fellowship and courage are what will truly decide the success of this operation. <laughs> Besides, you're the ones helping me. I can only focus on one thing at a time, after all. <sighs> Traveler, I certainly didn't expect our first conversation to be so serious. I've heard all about your accomplishments. Ever since you arrived, I've been hoping to meet you and offer you Natlin's highest level of hospitality. Um, why? Why? Is that not what happened in the other nations you visited? pretty complicated at the start. And, you know, in the middle. But our reputation's solid nowadays! <laughs> That's more like it. After all, I've heard you're someone who transcends fate. Perhaps even more than you can imagine. But we can talk about that some other time. Ideally, this would be the perfect night for a drink and some musical ambiance. But there are important things to be done. Oh, I almost forgot. Atea was wounded in the fight against the Abyss. She wanted us to give this to you. It embodies fond memories and my strength of will. That's what she asked us to tell you. She said you'd know what that means. <sighs> I didn't think this day would come so soon. The flames of her life force... I can feel them flowing within the talisman. <laughs> if things were different, the two of us could have enjoyed the hot springs together while she gave this to me in person. We're supposed to be hot spring buddies after all. But don't worry. This talisman means a great deal to me. I'll take good care of it. And once this is all over, I'll pay Atea a visit. You said you didn't want to jeopardize the production of Contending Fire. But that's not at all why you decided to suspend the pilgrimage, is it? You're right. Even now, the production of Contending Fire is far from sufficient. The gradual corrosion caused by the Abyss has resulted in a massive shortage of pyro energy. And we're currently at the breaking point. As things stand, the pilgrimage is a lost cause. Suspending it allows us to save our strength to defend the tribes. The Abyss has brought catastrophe to Natlan, and Kachina's disappearance in the Night Kingdom is a direct consequence of that. We can't let the general public know that. No. If the public learned that Natlan's destruction was close at hand, there would be immense panic. But if I said nothing at all, they would have continued to question the integrity of Natlan's heroes. Another simple choice. The latter was clearly the better solution. But you chose otherwise. I have never subscribed to the belief that the right choice is the one with the fewest sacrifices. Let's go. There's still a way for the Sacred Flame to last a little longer. You mean... Yes. Come with me. The Sacred Flame must never go out. Not only does it strike fear in the Abyss, but it's also the pillar of Natland stability. So until our heroes are ready, I will sacrifice my power to keep it burning. But that can only last so long. I think we should focus on the remaining ancient name bearers. Don't let desperation cloud your judgment. Those chosen by the Wyab have already embarked on their destined path. It is for them to decide how that journey ends, not us. All we can do is support them. Even so, for you to make this sacrifice, it's not right. <laughs> if not me, then who? No other is capable of sustaining the sacred flame. 
I possess great strength, but I'm not above my people. This is part of my duty. Archon! It's the Fatui! The Archon of Natlan. A force to be reckoned with. The secret of the Ley Lines is no secret to me. Long have they been destined for ruin. And since the oath made five centuries ago remains unfulfilled, what use is the Gnosis in your hands? I don't know what you mean. But it sounds like this is about more than the Tsaritsa. In times of crisis, someone must pick up the mantle of salvation. Your plan has reached an impasse, and now it falls to me to create new rules for Natlan. But before the dawn of a new age, the old must be destroyed. I assume that's the end of your speech? Good. People like us? Let our blades do the talking! of the night wind send word the captain and his followers must be apprehended are you all right archon he was a formidable opponent exactly what i would expect from the first of the fatui harbingers I never imagined someone could match you in combat. If the Tsaritsa sent him here, why would he bring up what happened five centuries ago? Yeah, and how much does he know about Natlan? The Harbingers are all driven by their own personal goals. The only purpose that unites them is collecting the Gnosis. But I'm sure the Captain has his own reasons for being here as well. 
Whatever his motive, we should shift our focus to the Fatui. If they attack again, and we're not prepared, we're done for. No. We're running out of time. The wound I inflicted should hold him back and weaken him for the time being. Besides, I'm sure you noticed. The power that came to his rescue just now came from the Masters of the Nightwind. In other words, there are traitors among us. Not necessarily. This could prove to be a very valuable turn of events. When we exchanged final blows, I sensed an unusual presence within him. I'll need to investigate further. Kanich, go to the Masters of the Nightwind and look into who could have aided the Captain. Speak to Seat Lali. She should know. Of course. I'll head out right now. Do you still intend to... Yes. But fear not. Natland's strength has never rested solely in its Archon. Together we foresaw the only path that leads to our nation's future. We must trust in that vision now. Is everything okay, Archon? Ah, uh, completely fine. Just lamenting the fact that I never got a picture when I could still turn my hair into flames. <laughs> uh, too late now. I just hope the others have a safe journey. like the Archon unleashed her power. She must be fighting a formidable opponent. Should we go back and check what's going on? Have faith in the Archon. She wouldn't lose in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Once we find Kachina's ancient name, we'll head right back. Okay, let's just keep climbing. Emon really hopes nothing goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 